Hey guys, this is Will from Going Out Some Places. Well, the day has finally arrived. All of the MagSafe gear has been slowly trickling in this week with the final piece being this one. This is Apple's iPhone 12 Pro. Well, I know you have a ton of questions about MagSafe and mobile in terms of compatibility. What works, what doesn't work. I'm gonna be getting into all those details. But before we begin, make sure you watch before or I guess after this video, everything about mobile by Peak Design. So everything from the unboxing, the everyday case, the wall mount and mobile tripod so far. And if you're thinking of backing, and if you're thinking about backing this Kickstarter, make sure you click on the special link down below. That would be a huge support for everything that we do here at Going Awesome Places. Shall we begin? Let's start off with the everyday case to see how it's compatible with essentially the MagSafe charger. So let's fire it up and see how this works. Curious to find out, okay, is it compatible first of all? Let's see. It is charging. Okay, it works, it works. Um, I'm gonna put this flat down. and you feel the magnet, but it's not very strong. I'm a little bit disappointed. Yeah, you see it catch, but it's gotta be really close. So probably at that point it catches. So we're talking like two centimeters, which is a lot less than the Peak Design products. Yeah, you gotta be really close. Um, what's interesting is that it does wiggle around based on because there are four magnets on the everyday case. So it wiggles around there. I think having that target certainly helps. So I know exactly where to put it this way. But if I have it the other way around, I wonder if I might not hit the target right away. So that could be something to consider. Um, where it might not necessarily catch on first try if you, don't, if you don't get it right. So the next most important thing is all about wireless charging. After all, that's the reason why this took a long time to develop, creating a new system that would have magnets but would allow wireless charging to work. And so Mobile by Peak Design was designed for that. MagSafe was designed for that. So what I was really curious about with all the MagSafe stuff here is just how efficient the charging would be um, and would there be an advantage of the 15 watt with the iPhone 12 Pro uh, or is the iPhone 11 Pro with the everyday case about the same. So to be able to do this test, I'm using an app called Amperes. It's on iOS. It's pretty much the only app that allows uh, the phone to be able to measure uh, wattage and milliamps. It's not the most accurate because it's not pulling that information from the system itself, but it's actually doing a charge to measure those numbers. But what I've done is tried to recreate a very similar condition between the 12 and the 11. I've turned off Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. Um, I'm in airplane mode and I've turned off uh, battery, uh, optimized battery charging in the system. So all that's already done. What we're gonna do now is do a series of tests with different combinations that I can think of to show you just the results that we're getting. Well, that was a lot more complicated than I thought. I really wanted to show you guys a whole bunch of different cases, scenarios with different cases, chargers, cables, um, and I did a little bit of that, but it was very complex. Parts of it was because the Amperes app was just really slow to run, and so I was filming all this, I realized this would be so boring and not footage that I would ever use. And on top of that, I was seeing really, really strange results between the two phones, the 12 and the 11, that really got me second guessing what the heck I was doing. So, I did all those and I compiled all the results. So I think the best way to go about this is to just go through the numbers side by side and see what I found. So let's go through the test results. And what I saw was just really interesting and really threw me off in terms of how I was going to test this. Uh, what you have here, this is the iPhone 12. This is the iPhone 11. This is with the everyday case. This is with the MagSafe case on. What you're looking at is Ampere 4. This is the app I use to measure all this. 
It primarily measures watts, which is a measure of power, and amps or milliamps here, which are a measure of current. Um, I think without getting into the technical sides of what these mean, really the higher the number, the better. The first test, this is with the case on, and I want to test it, both phones, with the new MagSafe charger. That was kind of the whole purpose behind all this, right? And what I was seeing was already not what I expected. So I knew that the wireless charger was rated for 15 watts, so I should be getting close to 15. I was getting 12, so lower, fine. But then I looked at the iPhone 11, I was seeing only 3.94, that's four watts. That's a massive difference. I was expecting maybe 10 or nine, maybe, something like that, but this is a lot lower. So is this related to the Peak Design everyday case? I'm not sure. So then I did another test. I said, okay, why don't I you know, get rid of the MagSafe charger? Why don't we do a test with another wireless charger? Now, this was a different wireless charger than I had on the table earlier, but I found a different one. This was QC 3.0. So the iPhone 12 was reading 6.63 watts. The iPhone 11, only 2.49 watts. So you're getting a lot less again with this phone with a case on, so not related maybe to the MagSafe charger, at least I thought at this point, there was drop off, which is what I expected, but still the difference between two phones, quite glaring. Then I did a test where uh, I said, okay, why don't we just plug straight into Lightning, right? Let's get rid of the wireless charger and see what's happening here, at least to get a benchmark of the two phones. And what I saw was pretty interesting 23.22 watts plugged into the 18 amp block. So pretty high, that's the number I expected. But with the 11, I was only getting 13.71. So we're already seeing uh, at least a 10 watt difference. I then went back and said, okay, let's do, let's do the test again. Let's, let's see what happened. Uh, maybe something was off. And I was measuring on the 12, 15.75, so that's great. That's what I was expecting because the MagSafe wireless charger is rated for 15 watts, right? But I was getting significantly lower numbers on the, uh, on the 11 at 2.49 watts, so 2.5 watts, incredibly slow. Then I thought, okay, let's find out once and for all, is it case related? So I got rid of the case and I got rid of the case for this. So this is bare naked phone onto the MagSafe charger and I was reading 9.29 watts. Weirdly enough, without the case, it was slower, but maybe that's a bit of an anomaly, but okay, 10 watts on the 12. But again, on the iPhone 11, it was getting a bit of a higher wattage in terms of charge, but still only 3.44. So at this point, you know, maybe, okay, it's not related to the case. I think there's actually something wrong somewhere. And then finally I did another test with my other wireless charger I was intending to originally use. Got it working with the right cable this time. And this iPhone 12 was getting 6.68 watts. That's kind of in the range for a you know 10 watt wireless charger with some loss. Um, but I was seeing um, slightly better, but still a little bit lower, 4.57 watts on this other charger. The only conclusion I can kind of loosely make based on these results is that the iPhone 12 with MagSafe works as intended, but when it comes to the iPhone 11 with MagSafe, it's not even close. Like it can't even get to the, to not even 10 watt. So these four results, one, two, three, four, all with MagSafe, I could barely get four watts out of it with or without the case. So at this point, I think you can say that the MagSafe charger just doesn't work for any phone other than the 12. We can finally talk about the other most important thing in this video, which is, okay, if you're invested in iPhone 12 or any sort of MagSafe type accessory, how does it actually play nice or not nice with the line of mobile by paint design products? First, I gotta say that I've been playing with this a little bit. The, the cases, I have a lot of gripes with it. I'm not gonna get to it, but let's start off with the phone with the MagSafe case on, the silicone case. Um, I'll first say that, you know, when I look at MagSafe charger, um, the magnets are about the same strength as when I played with it with the everyday case earlier. 
it's just not particularly strong, maybe slightly stronger. Um, the connection is for sure better because instead of four magnets here, uh, you have the same ring of circle, uh, sorry, ring of magnets on this, so they match exactly. So the connection is perfect every time. So that compatibility for sure is there. But what about everything else with Peak Design here? So right off the bat, uh, let's talk about wall mount. So wall mount's flat, there's no boss or anything like that for slim link, and this should work pretty well. But, you know, I'm gonna put it on and the connection is really, really weak, okay? Um, I could do this all day long and it's, it's, it's loose, it wiggles, there's no solid connection there. Now I tried this with the fridge earlier and same kind of result. If you didn't really touch it at all, yes, it would stay still and you could have it in horizontal or vertical orientations, but like I, I don't know if I would trust it. Like it would have to be in a very safe location for you to be able to do something like that. All right, so before I get to universal mount, let's talk about some of these other guys. All of these accessories, the Bike Mount Pro, the Car Mount, and also the mobile tripod, they all have a boss on them right now. Okay, so that means that this has a hard connection. These are soft connections, but I mean, off the bat, I already know what's gonna happen. If I try, I can feel a connection there, but because the boss is there, that uh, it protrudes out, the magnets don't make a great connection, and it's, yeah, it can't even do anything. Same thing with this guy, Ugh, nope. Um, and then this guy just kind of falls down. So, yeah, it just doesn't work. Anything with a boss doesn't work. Luckily, we know that for the mobile tripod that they're getting rid of the boss, so that's gonna be re-engineered to work, so that's a good thing, uh, but these just don't. So then I had the brilliant idea of what if I took the universal mount, I know this is, this is kind of a dumb thing to do, but bear with me. What if I put it on the back like this? It's really thin. Um, chances of you knocking it are pretty low. It, it's kind of, it's, it's okay. It's okay, right? It's acceptable, maybe, maybe less acceptable, but you know. So I'm gonna try it with the Bike Mount Pro. Connection is solid. It snaps right on because of really more peak design than, than MagSafe. Um, and if I hold it like this, okay, kind of works. It's, ooh, yeah. So, it, it works to a degree, and then any sort of shaking or movement, it's gonna fall off, so it's not secure. And the problem really is MagSafe. Um, that's, that's really the problem at the end of the day. So I'm gonna hit that thing to, hit the button to release the latch, and that's good. Okay, what about, what about car mount? So again, really strong connection with the universal adapter, and I think in a car, this could be okay. Um, you know, slight vibration movement, I think it would, it would be able to withstand that. Um, anything more, and I mean, even this, like, it's, it's not a solid magnetic connection. It's kind of there, it's good enough, but not super solid. So uh, I don't know if I would trust that still. What about mobile tripod? Okay, it kind of works, but yeah, let's see, different, oh, it's just, oh man, it is so sensitive. Any sort of wiggle or touch and it falls off. Uh, yeah, not, not fantastic. It, it's, it's probably the worst out of these three, surprisingly. Um, and the last thing, I, I, I brought this accessory. This is just kind of your standard magnetic um, clamp, uh, vent clamp accessory that you can find on Amazon. And okay, how, how would this work? So raw to the phone case, ooh, it slides right. It's like too smooth and it's not a strong enough of a magnetic connection. What about with universal mount? No, just, oh God, it's a disaster. Uh, it's trying to find one of the corners of the magnets and this is loose, it, yeah, just doesn't work. Uh, so there's that. And last thing I'll show you just super quick is that you're maybe thinking, okay, it's probably the silicone case's fault. What if you were just naked phone? How would MagSafe on just this work? Because this has MagSafe as well, obviously. So let's try it again. So wall mount. Okay, 
it has a no, no, it sucks. Like just, it's the same, same thing. It's not a great connection. Um, yeah, obviously these aren't gonna work because of the boss. So again, let's try using the universal mount. Solid connection, seems okay, but, but I mean, you're looking at this and it's like, it's moving way too easily. Let me disconnect that. Car mount, it's on, but it can come off just like that. Not super safe. And yeah, it's no, just no. And lastly, what about this kind of standard generic mount? Okay, it's on, but if you look closely, it's sliding downwards. Ooh, it's, it's no good. So, lesson of the day. MagSafe magnets suck. They're not very great. They're good for this specific one purpose. Um, I even saw videos of this with the, the wallet that hasn't been shipped out yet. Uh, but th that connection is terrible. So overall, I think this actually bodes well for Peak Design uh, in terms of mobile, that there is a strong case for something that is more is better engineered for anything that has any sort of movements. Like MagSafe is great when it's on a stationary table, but you factor in stuff where you're on the go using different accessories. MagSafe just isn't good enough. And I don't know if, you know, the magnets, yeah, it doesn't matter because these are strong magnets. They're not, it, it's the problem is this. These have weak magnets. So I don't know if there's anything you can do about that. Maybe in the next generation or something like that. Well, today didn't go as planned. At the beginning of it all, when I got the phone, iPhone 12, I thought this was gonna be a piece of cake. I was gonna talk about MagSafe, what worked, what didn't work. I knew kind of how that would go with the Peak Design accessories. But when it came to the wireless charging between the two and the MagSafe charger specifically, I mean, the results were so wild. I think, I mean, based on what I saw, essentially MagSafe charger doesn't work well with the iPhone 11, works well for the 12. I mean, I feel like wireless charging in general is not maybe so great on the 11 compared to the 12 now that I've seen the two in action. Maybe that's always been the case or maybe there's been some deterioration in my one year old phone. Um, yeah, really weird. I think as other people start testing this, I hope I'm not the only one of experiencing this with the MagSafe charger. Um, the other thing I learned today was that the MagSafe system in general just is not not as not superior to the Peak Design Slimlink system. Having played with this for a week, um, the magnets in this are so much better from a system perspective. It's way stronger than what you get over here. I feel like you're getting child's play magnets on the MagSafe. Like it's good enough to put something on the table and do what it says, which is to latch on to MagSafe to wirelessly charge. But in terms of practical uses, in terms of everyday like things in the car at, you know, being able to dock it on the wall or in the office to use it on your bike or motorcycle. Like this isn't going to work flat out. So MagSafe is, is just not a particularly strong magnet, which is great because that means that the Peak Design mobile uh, system, the whole ecosystem just has so much more compelling use and why I think you should actually get you know, the Peak Design Everyday case over a case like this. Um, just because the wide range of use for this and the magnets are just way better. Um, I think there's some work to be done on the Peak Design side. Uh, there's certain things that uh, definitely for the accessories need to be adjusted if you want to make it compatible with this without a boss square thing. Um, and I think for this, some thought maybe put around the whole circle array of magnets versus four distinct areas of magnets on a case like this. I don't know, I'm just putting that out there. Anyways, thanks for watching and bearing with me with this video that just became so different than what I expected. Um, make sure you like and subscribe. Again, if you haven't backed to Kickstarter, go through my link, which obviously supports everything that I do at Going Awesome Places. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next Peak Design video.